Raptors fans got a glimpse of what Emmanuel quickly looks like in a Toronto Raptors uniform, but what can we really expect from the player for the rest of this season and beyond? That's what we're going to answer in today's video, and I got to tell you, Raptors fans, it's time to get very excited. Let's get into it. This is Amateur Hour Sports, the YouTube channel completely dedicated to providing you with Toronto Raptors news coverage and insight and analysis in videos just like this one. So if you like what you see from today's video, then get subscribed to the channel. Help me on my road to 17,000 subscribers and smash that like button to help drive us up in the YouTube algorithm if you find yourself enjoying along the way. Thank you so much to you guys for helping the channel hit 16,000 subs right at the end of 2023. We had a great year last year. Let's get started with a great year this year and get off on the right foot for 2024. And the Toronto Raptors seemingly did the exact same win with the recent win over the Cleveland Cavaliers and it was the first taste of the new faces in RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly in Raptors uniforms and I gotta say they were definitely impressive in the 124 to 121 victory for the Raptors at the Scotiabank Arena taking care of business grabbing a win right before the start of their West Coast road trip but in particular wanted to focus this video in on Emmanuel quickly because for a lot of people the blue chip piece the centerpiece the main acquisition in this trade from OG and Anobi going to the New York Knicks and acquiring these players the main piece in the return to a lot of people seems to be RJ Barrett and maybe understandably so but to myself the main piece in this trade is Emmanuel Quickly, and I'm so excited about the prospect of what this player can bring to the team for this season and beyond in a long-term setting, and I think you should very much be as well. So, Emmanuel Quickly, let's talk about what he's done with the New York Knicks, specifically what he has been doing with them this season, because last season we know he was very impressive with that team. He was the favorite to win sixth man of the year right before the award was announced. However, he did fall short to Malcolm Brogdon in that discussion. Runner-up to sixth man of the year, definitely the type of player that the Raptors could use, but perhaps the Raptors see him with an even bigger role. Because get a load of the statistics that he displayed with the New York Knicks so far this season, and in the one game so far with the Raptors. Emmanuel quickly on this season is averaging 15 points per game, 2.5 assists, 2.7 rebounds, and doing so very efficiently, especially for his size. 45% are just about from the field, almost 40% shooting from three, and 86% from the line. But as you can see with this graphic, where these statistics start to become really impressive is when you look at the per 36 numbers. Now, it's not like Emmanuel Cookie's playing like, you know, 13 minutes and we're kind of boosting with the per 36 here. He's already been getting 24 minutes a game this season, so... It's very viable to say that he could get to these numbers if he's given more minutes because in his per 36, he's averaging 22.3 points, 3.7 assists, and 4 rebounds. What's been very strange about Emmanuel quickly this season is that he's gone from 29 minutes per game, which he had last year with the New York Knicks, and in the 30 games he played with the New York Knicks this season, he averaged 24 minutes. Despite the five-minute drop-off, he's actually averaging more points per game this season than he was last season. So it's just a weird case of Tibbs taking away his minutes. But Emmanuel quickly is getting even better despite that. So let's just imagine what that role could look like with the Raptors where... We've seen already he's going to be having that starting role for the team and getting even more minutes. I thought it was a really nice decision from Darko out the gates just to get RJ Barrett and Emmanuel quickly accustomed to life in Toronto and get them in the starting five. I thought he'd want to warm them up to the team a little bit, maybe bring them off the bench, but he's going with the lineup and I'd be shocked if he changed it up for any of the upcoming games here. I wanted the starting five with these new players to be Emmanuel quickly at the one, RJ Barrett, Barnes, and Siakam as the wings, the forwards, doesn't really matter what position they're listed at. They're interchangeable in those wing settings. But you have Barrett, Barnes, and Siakam in the wing spots. And you have Jakob Pertl at the five. And specifically, the one we want to highlight here is Emmanuel quickly at the one. I wasn't sure if Darko was going to go this way. I thought he may have wanted to put Schroeder back into the starting five as a point guard and have Emmanuel quickly as that spark bug player off the bench that so often this season the New York Knicks have used him as and have needed him as. But I really like to be committed to him as a point guard. And I also want to give credit to people who cover the Raptors in the media as far as asking questions in press conferences here because they did get some great answers out of Darko heading into that game against the Cleveland Cavaliers because it was noted that Emmanuel quickly was going to be playing as the point guard. So they asked Darko specifically about what sort of role you want to see Emmanuel Emmanuel quickly have for the Raptors and in what ways you want to use him perhaps differently than the New York Knicks were using him and specifically 
Darko talked about empowering him as a playmaker, and I thought that was great to see, really wanting to use Emmanuel quickly as a ball handler, as a point guard. You know, the New York Knicks so often just use him as that bucket getter off the bench, and he's very good at doing that. But this is a guy who can definitely take his game to another level if he's given the tools to do so. And right out of the gate, I mean, we saw it in that Cleveland game, Darko wants to empower him and provide him with the tools to succeed. We know that Darko Ryakovic coming into the team as well was a very pick-and-roll heavy coach. Perhaps we want to see a little bit more of that with the Raptors this season. But he's also going to put a lot of focus into using Emmanuel quickly as the pick-and-roll ball handler. And again, we saw that in bunches against the Cleveland Cavaliers despite the player hitting some foul trouble early on in this game. Despite having pretty much only just met Jakob Pertl, the two looked pretty good in tandem with those pick-and-roll settings. It's really nice as well for Emmanuel quickly. What's so good about the pick-and-roll game that he can bring to this team is that you can't go under those screens. You can't hedge those screens. You can't cheat and go around the screen. You have to go over and meet quickly or else he's got the pull-up jumper that's super threatening from the outside. If not, he can also drive inside, get to the rim, make a nice pass. He can work in tandem with Bianca Pirtle, as I said, or he can get to the rim. And I'm so pleased to say, ladies and gentlemen, watching this video, supporting this channel, I am so pleased to say the Raptors have a player, specifically a guard, who can hit floaters. Oh my goodness. Finally, we have a player who can do this. When he gets to the rim, he's meeting by the big defender there. Instead of fighting around contact, taking a tough shot, he's got the floater game to get them out of the paint. That's going to be so good for his game. That's going to provide even more space on the inside for perhaps the like of Barnes and Siakam if they want to cut to the rim. We saw a lot more cutting in that Cleveland Cavaliers game, and Emmanuel quickly, I believe, is a big reason why. So, as far as his talents at the moment, they are very much present. He provides a great catch-and-shoot threat from the outside. He provides great spacing. I really like the way that he pushed the pace for the Raptors in that first game for the Cavaliers, but like, it's not just the one game that he's had here. We've seen the ability that Emmanuel quickly has and has displayed in his time with the New York Knicks. He's a real Tyrese Maxey type of player, and this is just the exact type of players the Raptors have been looking for and have been maybe haven't been looking for, but have been needing. This spark plug sort of player, but in an elevated role. Can we really heighten that playmaking level, heighten that ball handling level while maintaining the scoring attributes that are so important to his game? If we have all of this, this is a perfect fit long term next to Scotty Barnes. This is the exact type of player that you wanted to pair Scotty Barnes with, to give him the spacing, to give him somebody to kick out to, but also feed off of those passes inside. Scotty Barnes can even feed on the kickout opportunities provided by Emmanuel quickly driving to the rim. So an absolute score here as far as this trade is concerned. Emmanuel quickly is still on his rookie contract. Yes, we're going to have to pay him in the, the year. Not quite sure and not quite ready to comment on exactly what those figures are going to look like for the player, but this is a very exciting player to have on the team. And it's even more exciting. The Raptors have full control over his future going forward. Maybe not quite full control, but heading towards restricted free agency, the Raptors can match any offer sheet that is sent over his way. So there is a big opportunity for the Raptors to have this player long term, grow with this player long term, and very hopefully succeed with this player long term as well. We've been crying out for a player like this, Masai Ujiri, Bobby Webster. I've been very hard on them in the recent in the recent seasons, in the recent year. But this is a real showcase of their abilities to make trades and assess the team and assess the situation. And they pull out a really, really good deal here for a player they had that was on an expiring contract. Yes, it's OG and Nobi, a wonderful player. But for an expiring contract, we may have gotten nothing for at the end of the season. We add in a player that fits this team perfectly from a fit on court and from a fit in terms of timeline that fits this team perfectly perfectly added on top of that we got a 23 year old rj barrett who still has that upside in his game and a 2024 second round pick via the detroit pistons a really high second round pick in the process as well emmanuel quickly i am so 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 excited to see what he can do in a raptors uniform for the rest of the season and beyond because i think that this is a potential star player in the making with just additional minutes with his skill set at the moment he can easily be a 20-point-per-game player, as we've seen. 
But if we can really heighten his playmaking in the process, the NBA better watch out. So what did you make of Manuel Quickly's first game in a Raptors uniform? And what do you expect to see from him for the rest of the season and beyond? As I mentioned, give me your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below because that's all for me for today. Smash that like button if you enjoyed this video and also subscribe to Amateur Sports for more Raptors content like this. Help us on the road now to 17,000 subs. Happy New Year, Raptors fans. Let's have a great year. I'll see you again next time for another video.